I'm just I'm pissed off the whole time. <laughs> the, the big headliner of of last week, you you get a perfect game. Like, there's no other way. There's no other way to sprints it, make it better. When did you think you knew it was going to be perfect? Welcome to FN Studios. Here with Coach Kevin and Greg, we are the Dropout Sports. Hey guys, welcome to another episode with the Dropout Sports guys. We have a special interview here with Peyton Gottschall. Peyton, please tell everybody who you are and tell a little bit about yourself. Hi, I'm Peyton Gottschall. I'm a sophomore pitcher at Bowling Green State University. And um, yeah, <laughs> that's about it. Okay, good. Well, we're going to get right into it. And I just want to ask a little bit about the beginning of how you got started in softball. Was there a family member or a friend or anybody who got you involved in the sport and made you fall in love with it really fast? Um, so my brother played baseball and we're eight years apart. So like I always went to his games and he was actually a pitcher. So we're really competitive with each other. So him and I would go back and forth about stuff. And I always told him, I was like, yeah, I was like, I'm going to be a pitcher too. And I'm going to be a lot better than you are. <laughs> and so that's kind of like why I got into pitching, but, um, really softball was my parents, um, my dad was a baseball coach and stuff like for my brother. And um, so he kind of got me into that. And then my mom, she was like, oh, you should be a pitcher. So I don't know. <laughs> All right. Um, so on your high school career, like when we were researching it, it was amazing. You had all these statistics that we'll, we'll get into in another question later. But um, every time we were doing our research, we kept coming back to this one, this one day in your junior year. I think it was, it was McKenna Durio, right? um she goes down you step up it's like before the tournament or during the tournament what went through your mind just stepping up into that ace position I mean I was really excited because I was like okay let's do this like I was just ready to go at it and just like get stuff done and to be that leader and to be that role model for the young girls who were on the team and just kind of like fulfill that position for them a lot of our girls were kind of younger we had a couple seniors that year and then that was about it so I knew like they looked up to me so I just kind of want to be there for them. Um, just to like follow up on that, were you like, were you always a leader in high school? Just wondering. Um, it was kind of weird my freshman sophomore year because I was more quiet, and that's kind of how I am now. It's just, <laughs> um, but yeah, like I kind of like really found my voice like more that year, and then that's kind of like I'm coming into that this year too as well. So. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot easier as a, like a junior and a senior to step up like that too. As a freshman and sophomore in high school, it's, it definitely is hard to be a leader. It's daunting. Yeah. yeah kind of like sticking with high school though. You, you, you won your league three times in, in high school. You had under a one ERA, like basically every year you were, you were there. You, you he even hit 586 as a senior. You're doing it on both sides of the ball uh, and your team won a state championship. Uh, so just kind of what, what went into maintaining that sort of dominance just individually and, and team-wise? I mean, for me individually, it was a lot. Um, my dad, really, he was always there like to motivate me and my mom as well. Like they just really wanted me to succeed. So anytime, like my dad, he would get right home from work around like five or six and I'd be right at the door with his bucket and his glove. I'm like, hey, can we go pitch? <laughs> and he would just like, he like kind of like get mad at me a little bit because he was all tired from work but I just had to sit there and bug him. And then he finally gave in, but <laughs> that was a lot of um, on him and just like taking me in my pitching lessons, like individually, but as a group, as a team, we kind of had to like motivate each other. So like I talk trash to a lot of people yeah. <laughs> that I know are comfortable with it. Okay. Cause that's just how I get motivated is like people talking stuff to me. And like, I just get really fired up on that. And so, that's kind of what I would do for people and like what we did within our team. And like, we'd see other people like talking about the season. So then we'd get really fired up about that. And it was just a lot of like motivating each other. Wait, wait, just do you, do you have one example of trash talk that like that you could give us? <laughs> yeah. So there's actually a girl on our team now. Her name's Greta Lesperance. She's a lefty. Um, her and I go at it all the time at practice. So like <laughs> if she's in the box against me, I'm like, Hey, yo, Greta, you're not going to touch this. I was like, you're not going to hit that. <laughs> Man, Greta, Greta's not going to be happy when she sees this interview. Yeah, yo. <laughs> oh, she gives it back to me, though, so. <laughs> there you go. So, again, during our research, um, 
for some reason, a lot of the time we were coming up on these um, on these articles where it said you were going, you verbally committed to uh, University of Tennessee at Martin, but <laughs> you're obviously at BG. So, um, well, what ha what happened in between that in order for you to kind of switch that? It was actually a really weird situation. So, um, I really loved the coach at uh, UTM, and I found out actually the last day of school, my senior year that he was retiring oh. and like for me I like sat down and discussed it with my parents we didn't really feel comfortable because it was nine hours from my house so I didn't feel comfortable my parents didn't really feel comfortable with me going to school where they personally didn't know the coach like I didn't know the coach we didn't get to sit down and actually talk to them and get to know them so I decommitted and then that was probably around June and then um I went back into the transfer por uh, portal or whatever. And then I got in contact with the coach Willis here at BG. And the first day actually, I could talk to coaches. I went on a visit here, fell in love with the campus, absolutely loved our coach and I committed. Well, speaking of the campus, whenever we interview someone, we like to get a little more personal about them and their life outside of the sport. Um, so me and Kevin actually went to BG together. He was my freshman year roommate and we know how great of a campus it is. So right off the bat, I just want to ask, what's your favorite thing about BG's campus? And also what's your favorite meal at the union that you have to get? <laughs> uh, probably. Okay. I'll go with the meal first, but, um, probably something from chicken dippity. Yes. I don't know. I love like their Falcon Bowl that they have. Greg's lost right now, but yeah. <laughs> I have no idea. I'm, I'm at OSU, so, but <laughs> go for it. And it's great. <laughs> probably um, my favorite part about campus is like the size of it mm -hmm. and how close everything is. Cause I know it's really hard, like athletics. Um, it's like a lot of places, like their stuff isn't on campus or around it. So like you have to drive like a little bit, but our stuff is all close. So it's literally like walking distance. So I could just walk to practice every day if I could. For sure. It really is. So another thing that we like to know is that, you know, with the pandemic and everything, everybody started watching Netflix and, and TV shows. And even though you're an athlete, I'm sure you have some time to watch some shows or favorite movies or anything. So what is your favorite show slash movie that you like watching right now? Um, my favorite show is probably Blue Bloods. If oh. you guys have ever heard of it, I love yeah. crime shows, like any kind of stuff like that. So I... I want to say I started watching it over the winter and then I'm already on like season four, episode 20. Jeez. So, Jeez. Yeah. That's, that's many, definitely some binge watching. Well, yeah. you, you took that pretty serious. You take it just like practice, I bet. Yeah. And uh, so as a softball player, um, I played baseball in high school. Greg played baseball. And we know that um, those athletes, they really have a lot of superstitions. So do you have a specific thing that you must do before every game or every time you pitch I used to in high school but it's kind of different now because mm -hmm. I always like my earrings I always have to like have them in but like college it's different so like you can just wear your jewelry mm -hmm. but in high school I'd always warm up pitching and then I'd take them out like directly after because we couldn't have them in mm -hmm. so like that was something I really stuck to but I don't really think I have any now just talking crap basically yeah. yeah. <laughs> Has to happen. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, kind of getting back to the field at this point, uh, we'll start with your 2020 season. Uh, you, you pitched in 16 of 17 games. You went 11 and 5, a 193 RA, 182 opponent batting average, and 128 strikeouts. You won Mac Pitcher of the Week twice, which actually you just won this week. Congratulations. Hey, yeah. <laughs> but what, what was it like for you just bursting onto the scene so quickly as a freshman? Were you like surprised with your early performance or were you expecting to do that in your first year? I was not expecting that at all, <laughs> honestly. Um, I was just happy I could get in there and do that for my team, like to be able to step up and fill that role for them. Cause I know they had a really good pitcher here um, that graduated right before I came in. So I was just really happy that I was able to fill that role and kind of like take that leadership role for the team. And um, I, I just wanted to ask this because it it just sounds insane to me. It, it was 16 of 17 games. What's your, what's your arm feeling like at that point? Like 10 <laughs> games in, you're just – how do you take care of that? I'm curious. Um, So I ice it a lot. Um, And then our trainers here take really good care of us. So 
we have treatment every day where we come in and basically whatever we need, they take care of. So I'll get like my shoulder, like my elbow and stuff, like just kind of like rubbed out and like iced and stuff. Just, yeah. <laughs> Man, I need some of that, and I'm not even pitching 16 out of 17 games. Yeah, Jeez. we all get old, man. <laughs> all right, so the, the big headliner of of last weekend, obviously, you started you started at that Invitational. You were playing double doubleheader against Cleveland State. That you you get a perfect game. Like, there's no other way. There's no other way that sprints it, make it better. It's just it's a perfect game. Mm -hmm. can, just can you just take us through your mindset throughout the entirety of that game? Just when, when did you know it was, when did you think you knew it was going to be perfect? How did it start? How did it finish? All of it. Um, so it's, it's a little embarrassing. Um, so during the game, I only know the first inning. And from there, I have no clue what inning it is. And oh. I'm constantly asking people in the dugout, like, hey, do you know what inning it is? Because I'm trying to figure out, like, how many people I got to go. And it was actually the last inning. And I asked our shortstop, Maddie McCoy, I was like, hey, is, it, is this like the fifth or sixth inning? And she's like, yeah, this is a sixth. So we go out, get the last three outs. We come in and she looks at me. She's like, you know, I lied to you. Like, she's like, you just threw a perfect game. I was oh. like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I had, I had no clue. And then everybody was like, oh, congrats. And then our coach walks up to me with the game ball. And I was like, this really just happened. <laughs> yeah, what the, wow. Wow. Going back to the day before, though, and it sounds kind of crazy to say this, but it's entirely possible that that wasn't even your most dominant game of the weekend. <laughs> the day before, you threw a complete game, one hit shutout where you struck out 20 batters. And, you know, we all know here seven innings, there's only 21 outs to get. So kind of how did it feel for you to break the, the record of a BG school record? Uh, how did it feel for you to break that record? And talk us through with your thought process throughout this game also. Um, kind of throughout the game, it's the same thing. Like, I never really know what's going on, like, on the field other than just getting out and going to hit. But um, after the game, once I found out, um, we were on our way home. And then I called my mom. Like, I always call her after stuff. So I talked to her when I was back in my room. And after I got off the phone with her, I just started crying. Like, I never really thought I'd be able to like do so much, but I'm really just thankful for our team and what they do for me because they really motivate me and help me stay in the game and basically just get the outs for them. Yeah. I mean, we haven't even talked about your seven and a third inning game where you came in second inning, ended up winning in nine innings. I mean, 51 strikeouts in three games. That's, that's amazing. <laughs> but uh, just what, like, Another question though, what kind of mindset do you have when you're when, when you're out in the circle? Uh, my mindset, I'm just, I'm pissed off the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm all angry out there. And then like, sometimes like I'll crack jokes or like talk my trash like I do. But other than that, like, I'm just, as soon as I'm on the mound, I'm just like straight ahead, just pissed off and just ready to go at the batter. That's the best thing you can do to, to try to strike out a batter, honestly, but um yeah uh, basically for for the last question that we have for you today it's more personal and what you're going to do in the future um we watched actually the 60 second interview that you did uh that was posted on instagram today by a bg page and we uh, saw that you said you were going to be a special educator or that's what you want to be uh why is that um i feel like they're really um they kind of have like stereotypes about them and they're not really i guess um trying to find the word like they're not really represented well mm -hmm. so that's like really important for me and I know that some of them don't have like a large lifespan so I want to do the most I can for them and to try and like make the most out of their lives and have like a really good impact for them that I can mm -hmm. so that's pretty much like the whole reason that I wanted to do that that's awesome that's awesome. That is awesome. Man. We watched we watched a bunch of YouTube videos as much. We did as much research as we could on you. And, and one thing that reoccurred was that you were very smart and that you had a good heart. So that's awesome to hear. Um, and uh, thanks for coming to sit down and talk with us. You know, short little interview, but we'll have it up soon. Uh, guys, please make sure to subscribe to the TWSN YouTube channel and download our app. And we will be posting this soon. Thank you, Peyton. And uh, we'll see you guys later. Thank you.